Hey folks, Matt Schneiman coming to you from Bright Bites uh, with another video. This time we're looking at the environment domain. I'm gonna right click it and open it in a new tab. First place I go as always is to trends. I wanna see how things have changed over time. I'm gonna look at success indicators, open up three Ps, looks like 1104 to 1118. Look at support, I can see two of them together. Good way at a high level to see how things have changed. I'm going to go back to the environment domain. I made another video that focused on the three P's. So I'm going to skip over that. If you're interested in learning more about the three P's, um, I would certainly check out the other video. Let's go into support. There's just so much within the environment domain that um, I think splitting it up into two videos is important. Uh, quality of support services at school. Some great stuff in here. Uh, teacher support, the quality of uh, support for problems disrupting instruction. What does that look like? Teacher support that the quality of support for answers to routine questions. And finally, teachers report that the quality of support for instructional technology planning. This one, along with the other two, they're both, the, all three of them are incredibly important. This one I, is one of my go-tos um, because I think about technology trying to be integrated into a curriculum or into a lesson uh, seamlessly. Uh, what we often find is that uh, folks will, or teachers will design um, a lesson, they've got their lesson plan, and then it's, okay, how can technology fit into this instead of thinking about from the beginning? What does that look like? Um, and so are there opportunities to provide some instructional technology planning? Maybe it's one lesson um, a month, one lesson every three months, um, one lesson every six months, whatever it might be, where um, somebody sits down with an educator and uh, designs a lesson lesson from the beginning, um, thinking about how technology can fit into that lesson um, rather than it feeling, uh, feeling forced. And uh, kids recognize that stuff. So we've got support, lots of other good stuff in there. I would definitely look at speed of technology support services at school. Same data points, but instead of quality, you're getting speed. Um, teacher ed tech professional development, and I'm going to open up teacher interest and ed tech PD topics as well. So how much time are they spending in school-sponsored PD? I talked about norming on uh, another one of my videos. This is another place where you can think about norming. I don't know that it makes a lot of sense to have over 33 hours of technology PD. Um, there's a lot of other stuff going on. And so the end, uh, the, the ideal might not be 33 hours. The ideal might be somewhere in the nine to 16 or 17 to 32. I'm not sure why the why this matters isn't showing up here, um, but the why this matters when it is showing up um, says that uh, research shows that teachers need at least 14 hours of professional development on a single topic to be able to apply it successfully to their practice. Um, so, um, Maybe, yeah, the 9 to 16 or 17 to 32 is going to be your sweet spot. There's some additional data points below that um, I would definitely look at, uh, such as um, non-school sponsored formal PD or non-school sponsored informal PD. Uh, you know, some uh, information to get about that is our teachers taking an initiative and um, trying to get some PD outside of the traditional school environment. I'm gonna go back to the um, environment domain because I do want to um, go to a couple more places. I'm gonna to go to teacher beliefs about technology use for learning. I'm gonna to go to teacher beliefs about technology in education. And then finally, student perceptions of obstacles to technology use. So first, teacher beliefs about tech use for learning and then about technology and education, and then finally student perceptions of obstacles to technology use. Technology use in class can enhance student learning. Um, we can see that uh, typically these numbers are high, which is great because it shows that now might be a good time to try to take advantage of the fact that teachers believe in the ability of technology to actually improve the learning environment. This one, I always find so interesting, my school encourages technology use for teaching and learning. So I'm gonna compare this to national averages. I can see, all right, 89% of teachers agree or strongly agree with this statement right here. I'm gonna quickly jump back and look at the three Ps and take a look at teacher frequency of technology discussions. I love comparing data points together because one data point on its own can you know, be interesting, can give me a lot of good information. Data points compared to each other 
Just provide additional layers, a little bit more nuance. Teachers feel recognized for integrating technology into teaching. National averages, I think it's 37%. Yep, look at that. 37% of teachers say, it's, um, say that uh, they always feel recognized or more than half the time they feel recognized. So 37%, even if you wanted to add less than half the time, which I'm not sure I would, um, you would get 58%. But if we were to use these two, 38%, 37%, and compare that to the fact that 89% say their school encourages technology use for teaching and learning. What's going on there? Why the disconnect? Why do teachers feel like they're being encouraged to do things, um, but uh, they're not feeling recognized to do those things? Maybe a little bit of lip service being paid to um, some of these activities. Feels like everybody wants technology use in their classrooms, um, but really going that next step and providing some recognition to teachers can be, can be powerful. Um, so that one was teacher beliefs about technology use for learning. This one, I feel confident managing a classroom where students are using technology. Um, I have a couple colleagues that would disagree with me on this one, but personally, I think that everybody should be in the strongly agree category here. Um, I mentioned norming. Uh, I would want everybody to feel great, to feel confident in their ability to manage a classroom that was tech heavy. Um, because if things go wrong, if the network um, fails um, or crashes uh, or, um, you know, if, if uh, devices for some reason aren't working and I need to pivot, um, then uh, I want to make sure I, I feel comfortable with my classroom management skills. Uh, so uh, this one, I feel like if you're developing an action plan, should be in every single action plan. Um, this is another interesting one. I easily find new technologies to meet my teaching goals. This is. Um, I think uh, uh, can be connected to a data point within skills. Um, I easily um, find, or I am able to solve problems using technology. Uh, but um, if you're looking to uh, develop a core of teachers that are self-empowered, that take the initiative, this is a good data point to look at. And then finally, students believe the following obstacles prevent their use of technology at school. Let's see if I can look at um, nationally, school rules limit my technology use. You know what, have a conversation with kids about this. Why do they think that? Look at that, half of um, students who have answered the survey believe that school rules limit their technology use. So um, I would wanna know why they think that is, what kinds of rules they feel like are limiting their use, um, what specifically is it limiting. Uh, they, uh, students can be insightful when, uh, when having those conversations. So um, good place to, again, have, uh, have an open dialogue with, with students and um, you've got something concrete to talk to them about. Um, so that's the environment domain. Um, as always, you can check out uh, parent um, data as well, but um, hope that you found that helpful.